Mongolian warrior and ruler Genghis Khan created the largest empire in the world, the Mongol Empire, by destroying individual tribes in Northeast Asia. Born in north-central Mongolia around 1162, Genghis Khan was originally named Temujin after a Tatar chieftain that his father, Yesuke, had captured. Young Temujin was a member of the Borjigin tribe and a descendant of Kabul Khan, who briefly united Mongols against the Jin, dynasty of northern China. According to the Secret History of the Mongols, a contemporary account of Mongol history, Temujin was born with a blood clot in his hand, a sign in Mongol folklore that he was destined to become a leader. His mother Helen taught him the grim reality of living in a turbulent Mongol tribal society and the need for alliances. When Temujin was nine, his father took him to live with the family of his future bride, Borte. <laughs> On the return trip home, Yesuke encountered members of the rival Tatar tribe who invited him to a conciliatory meal where he was poisoned for past transgressions against the Tatars. Upon hearing of his father's death, Temujin returned home to claim his position as clan chief. However, the clan refused to recognize the young boy's leadership and ostracized his family of younger brothers and half-brothers to near-refugee status. The pressure on the family was great, and in a dispute over the spoils of a hunting expedition, Temujin quarreled with and killed his half-brother, Bector, confirming his position as head of the family. At 16, Temujin married Borte, cementing the alliance between the Konkurat tribe and his own. Soon after, Borte was kidnapped by the rival Merkit tribe and given to a chieftain as a wife. Temujin was able to rescue her, and soon after, she gave birth to her first son, Jochi. Though Borte's captivity with the Konkurat tribe cast doubt on Jochi's birth, Temujin had four sons and many other children with other wives, as was Mongolian custom. However, only his male children with Borte qualified for succession in the family. When Temujin was about 20, he was captured in a raid by former family allies, the Tai Chiuts, and temporarily enslaved. He escaped with the help of a sympathetic captor and joined his brothers and several other clansmen to form a fighting unit. Temujin began his slow ascent to power by building a large army of more than 20,000 men. He set out to destroy traditional divisions among the various tribes and unite the Mongols under his rule. Temujin, with smart tactics and tough actions, avenged his father's death by defeating the Tatar army and taking down tall Tatar men. His Mongol group also beat the Tai Chiut using strong cavalry charges. By 1206, he conquered the powerful Naiman tribe, gaining control over central and eastern Mongolia. Genghis Khan's early success was thanks to his sharp military skills and understanding of his enemies. He had spies and learned from enemy tech. His 80,000 well-trained soldiers communicated with smoke and torch signals. They all had bows, arrows, shields, daggers, and lassos. They carried special saddlebags that could float in rivers. Cavalrymen had swords, javelins, armor, and hooks to pull enemies off horses. They could shoot arrows while riding fast. Behind the army, there was a good supply system with ox carts carrying food, equipment, shamans for spiritual and medical help, and officials to keep track of the spoils of war. After winning battles against other Mongol tribes, leaders agreed to peace and gave Temujin the title Genghis Khan, which means universal ruler. This title was both politically and spiritually important. The top shaman said Genghis Khan represented the supreme god of the Mongols, Monke Koko Tengri, who they called the Eternal Blue Sky. This meant people believed his destiny was to rule the world. In the Mongol Empire, they respected all religions, but going against Genghis Khan was seen as going against God's will. Genghis Khan is supposed to have have said to one of his enemies, I am the flail of God. If you had not committed great sins, God would not have sent a punishment like me upon you. Genghis Khan used his special status to lead his armies. They were motivated by both faith and a need for more resources because there wasn't enough food for the growing population. In 1207, they defeated Shishia, and in 1211, they targeted the Jin dynasty in northern China for its rich rice fields and wealth. Genghis Khan's rule lasted almost 20 years. His armies were busy in the west, dealing with neighboring empires and the Muslim world. At first, Genghis Khan tried to make friends through trade with the Khwarizm dynasty, a big empire in the area. But things went wrong when the governor of Otrar attacked a Mongol mission, thinking it was a spy group. Genghis Khan was furious and asked for the governor to be handed over. When they said no, things got worse. The leader of the Khwarizm dynasty even sent back the head of a Mongol diplomat. This led to a major conflict. Genghis Khan personally took control of planning and executing a three-pronged attack of 200,000 Mongol soldiers against the Khwarizm dynasty. Those who weren't immediately slaughtered 
were driven in front of the Mongol army, serving as human shields when the Mongols took the next city. No living thing was spared, including small domestic animals and livestock. Skulls of men, women, and children were piled in large pyramidal mounds. City after city was brought to its knees, and eventually, Shah Muhammad and later his son were captured and killed, bringing an end to the Khwarizm dynasty in 1221. After the Khwarizm campaign, a time of relative peace called the Pax Mongolica began. Genghis Khan's conquests connected major trade hubs from China to Europe. He established a legal code called Yasa, which included rules against blood feuds, adultery, theft, and lying. It also had eco-friendly laws like not bathing in rivers and picking up after others. Breaking these laws usually meant death. Promotions were based on merit, not family. Religious and professional leaders got tax breaks. After dealing with the Khwarizm dynasty, Genghis Khan turned east to China, punishing those who resisted him. In the end, he sought revenge on the Tangut leaders for their earlier betrayal. Genghis Khan died in 1227, soon after the submission of the Shishia. The exact cause of his death is unknown. Some historians maintain that he fell off a horse while on a hunt and died of fatigue and injuries. Others contend that he died of respiratory disease. Genghis Khan was buried without markings, somewhere near his birthplace, close to the Onan River and the Kenti Mountains in northern Mongolia.